I'm starting this canvas by painting a ground with an orange color. So often when you paint the background, it's nice to use a color that is a good complement for the colors on top. So my painting is going to be a landscape with a lot of blue and green in it. Orange is the complement of blue. So I think that's going to leave a lot of nice little bits of color peeking through in the final painting. It will also give it a nice warm uh, glow coming from underneath in places, uh, depending on how opaque or transparent the paint is, of course. So this gets rid of the white canvas, uh, gives you something to work on. You could tone it in any color that you like, um, but like I said, I often use a complement to what I'm going to be painting on top of it. So you don't have to put this on thick. In fact, uh, thinner is better, so it dries quickly. I like to use fluid paint and even add a little bit of water to it. You can just put it on very random and messy. You can wipe some back in places if you want a little bit lighter value. I'm using a wider paddle brush from Liquitex. You could also use a household um, paintbrush as well to get it painted quickly. Remember, you're not painting a wall here. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect and you're not going up and down. Now we need to let that dry before we continue on to our sketch on top of it. I'm sketching on my outline here uh, using paint and a very fine round brush. So choose a complementing uh, color for this so that you can see it, something with a dark value. One of the things that's important when you're using a photo reference as a guide is to make sure that you have a good reference that has good strong values, the composition is good. If not, you're going to have to make some adjustments. So now putting in the reflection part from the mountains above. Now I'm adding my dark values in. I'm using a violet oxide for this um, mountain range. I'm using also a color shaper brush. So it's a silicone brush. I find it a fast way to block in a thin layer. Remember, we are not striving for perfection in this layer. It's just about getting your canvas covered uh, with the colors and the values that you're wanting to use. It's okay to leave some of the under color uh, coming through. You can also add some medium to your paint in this layer to keep it nice and thin. If you are using a paintbrush rather than a color scraper, make sure that it's a larger brush so that you stay nice and loose. 
So I'm coming back in on top of this, scraping some lighter color. And I am working wet into wet here and doing some uh, blending as I go, rather than mixing the color on my actual palette. Using a scraper or one of these color shaper brushes is a great way to get the more angular rocky shapes uh, that you would find in a mountain range or even on rocks. So I like it for that. So you can see the colors blending here. Scraping back to some of the orange. Adding a gel or a medium will keep your paint open longer. And if you struggle with your acrylics drying too fast, you could try also open acrylics, which stay open longer, acting a little bit more like um, uh, oil paint. I'm using a skewer here just to make some lines and marks back in. Coming back in with a lighter color here to establish the, the light part of the mountains. So it's important to establish your values early on in the game. Value is one of the most or the most important thing in paintings and understanding value. So they often say that value is king, but color takes all the credit. You can easily check your values using an app or just changing it on your camera, on your phone. I like to use the Notanizer app to switch it into black and white. Now, not all paintings need strong values. You might want to paint something that's more calm and tranquil, but generally speaking, um, one of the problems with a lot of paintings is that the values are wrong because it's hard to see value in color. It takes a lot of practice and uh, exercises to develop your eye. If this is something that you're interested in, uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like a video uh, with some uh, value exercises that you could do to hone your skills in understanding value more. So I blocked in now the reflection at the bottom and the sky at the top. So you can see that we have a variance of value in this painting. Often I see students losing their values as they go forward. So this is helpful to have a black and white image of the painting either printed out that you can refer back to or on your iPad that you can look at. When we're just looking at the image in color, it can be very difficult 
to see the value. Coming in here on the tree line, putting in the dark area, the shadow. This photo reference is from Lake Moraine in the Rocky Mountains in Alberta. It's close to Jasper. I had the opportunity to live in Jasper when I was young and work at the ski chalet. On our days off, we would go out to Lake Moraine. It's just incredibly beautiful, peaceful lake that has such a majestic feeling and beautiful teal color in the water, as so many of the lakes in the Rockies do. using a bamboo skewer here just to move some of that paint around a little bit and make some marks in it. So now I'm coming in with the other dark part at the top. So these are, are the trees. And of course, I will be adding color on top of this, but at this point, just trying to establish the values in the actual uh, photograph. Now I just use a photograph as a jumping off um, place. I try not to stay too married to it as I go forward. So this is a course I teach on simplifying the landscape and we do use photos of references. I also like to teach a more contemporary landscape workshop where we don't use photo references, but explore more from imagination. If you're interested in either of those workshops, uh, I have the Simplify, Simplify the Landscape coming up in my studio in Parksville, BC, and uh, that's in May. I'll leave the link in the description below for you to check it out. If it's something that you would like to learn online, please let me know in the comments. If there's enough interest, I would be happy to put a course together on Zoom. So just coming back in here, putting that color, establishing the, the lake area. And trying to leave some of those bits of orange peeking through. Still working with a wide color shaper brush and coming in with a lighter shade here. So this is the first step of the, the painting is the block in stage where we establish our values and our shapes. So you can reduce things down to shapes and focus on each shape. It's good to have three to five shapes overall. I realized that I didn't get the reflections right uh, from the mountains, so I'm just making some adjustments. Now, if you're having trouble with reflections, you can make a template and just out of um, paper and trace your mountains out, put them upside down to get the, the um, shapes right.
So I'm going to leave you with uh, this part one and uh, I will put up the part two of the video where I show you the continuation of this painting. So if you are enjoying this, uh, leave a comment, like and subscribe to my channel. It all helps the algorithm so more people can uh, see the video. Have a great day and happy painting.